change. Well, our meteorologist Kevin James has been investigating this, and he's going to show us if that could be fact or if it's all fiction. Well, we're all looking for answers, right? We you are. Know, it happens, and we're like, I go to my phone for answers. That's I right. Know, I, you know, everybody looks and up. Then and then you don't I, have it, yeah. How long have you worked here? Hang on. Yeah, like, <laughs> what do we do? Where are we? Well, uh, in short, the, the sun is not to blame. Now, I, I'm a big enthusiast about this stuff, but this is coming from NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center and NASA. So this was uh, actually multiple solar flares. We had three of them, and this is an image released by NASA. This is from this sunspot here. This is sunspot 3590. It's in the upper left side of the sun. It's a solar flare. We had three strong ones, also called X-class flares. We had the first one just after 5 o'clock our time on the 21st. And then we had another one, 12.30 a.m. And then the largest, the strongest one was actually yesterday, late in the day. So first off, the timing didn't quite line up. A solar flare, the light would be emitted from the sun. It would reach Earth in about eight minutes. This is different from a coronal mass ejection, or CMEs. Those are the really strong ones, and those are really focused. So those projectiles uh, are just basically as a cannon shot that would be coming out of the sun. The solar flare kind of erupts light and goes everywhere, but the CMEs are the stronger magnetic uh, pieces of energy that sparks our auroras and northern lights. And although oftentimes solar flares and CMEs come at the same time or around the same time, no CMEs were reported from this one by NASA or NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. So meaning it was a solar flare, not a CME. First off, the frequencies that that would impact also different from our cell phone ultra high frequencies that we would expect any impacts from that. So bottom line is unlikely, highly unlikely impacting uh, that cell traffic. Plus it, it affected really only AT&T. So the solar flare is not really going to care what kind of network. <laughs> this is kind of cool, Alicia. If you have your solar eclipse glasses, very important. You need solar eclipse glasses. This sunspot could be visible to the naked eye in the upper left side of the sun. So if you have yours yeah. ready for April 8th, then uh, make sure you're wearing these. Don't go outside and just look at the sun. But Make sure you have your glasses, but you might be able to see it with the naked eye, which is kind of cool. And it looks like actually the sun's going to be out for at least part of the day. Yeah, 